welcome. Today we're going to talk about drafts because it has become my writing tool of choice again after I, I really wanted to like it at first, but it just something about it didn't didn't mesh with my head. I think it was the fact that you can have something in your inbox or it can be archived and it can be in a workspace inbox or archive. And just about that, like I felt like there was too many spots for it to be as opposed to files and folders where it's just in a folder or it's not. But I think I've adjusted my workflow to get around that and to just make it really work. Before we dive into the video, let's say the two ways you can support the channel. One is to go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and support the channel. Number two is to go to Skillshare at, or Skillshare. I always do this backwards. CurtisMchale.ca slash Skillshare, where you can take my course on TickTick right now and watch my upcoming course on time blocking. Buckle up. All right, so here we are directly in drafts. We might as well just do it right out of drafts. And I say right here, the biggest hurdle is the lack of files and folders. But what I found is this excellent workspace switcher, and we'll just take us right there. So you can see it. It is easy to install. Just click install and basically you install it, follow the prompts, and it takes you or it allows you to tie your shortcuts into workspace command and all these different command structures. So it lets me say command two for my writing working. Command three, right? This is what I'm on right now. Four, I don't have five. So let's even add five. because I want five to be my, if I go into my workspaces here, my ideas workspace. So we can do that by coming over here and then we'll click in the bottom and manage groups. And I think I put that under basic. No, I, maybe I put under a workspace switcher. It's right there eight actions and command five had nothing. We'll go to our URL set. I'm going to edit this. And all we have to do in here is type ideas, save and exit. And now I can go three, four, five ideas. That was one thing that made a huge difference in what I, or in just how drafts worked for my head. And that's been excellent. Next up is footnotes. I don't actually have a footnote, so let's just make one quick. I'm gonna make a footnote. This is how I do it inline. Something cool, I wanna reference something else. I do this a lot in my book videos. And now I can go highlight it. And I, for me, I can tie it to uh, Shift Option Command K. And I have a footnote in Markdown. I went down to the end of my document. You see I have a footnote right there, something cool. So that, as a step, I had to take anything out of a IA writer or anything else and put it in, um, like into drafts to get that done. And again, there's an action that we can see, and there'll be links to the actions that I use in the show notes. Right there, an action that allows me to create a footnote easily in drafts. Next up, post published action. Um, I just don't like repeating things. My CMS is built on Statomic, and that just lets me write a markdown. So I have a whole post publish action, which I can show you. Let me make sure I know where it is first. Uh, it's probably under processing. Nope. Oh, you know what? It's under basic. Not base, not keyboard basic. So this is again one thing that's still like figuring out what action group I'm in. Basic, so it's save files and archive. So let's open it, manage groups, basic, there's 13 of them, sales file, save files as archive, which you can see I have here tied to uh, shift command S. It does a bunch of steps, right? It runs a shortcut to name the files properly for Statomic, and it runs a script for me to rename the file. And then I export it, and then I run another shortcut that works with working copy and runs it all through Git, right? It pulls the files from my Git repository, it moves the file where I want it, and then it automatically pushes the file up to Git, and my Git repository deploys off to my site, just kind of in one shot. That's been a big automation thing that has just been excellent for me and been very helpful. Next up, all of this is available on Mac OS too. Um, now, with the exception of like my post publish shortcut, because it doesn't have working copy, but you can actually decide what 
types of actions and what parts of actions run in um, oh, sorry manage groups in Mac OS. Let's come back in to my post publish action. And you can actually choose, I don't know why two finger scroll isn't working today. There you go. Right, tie it in my keyboard shortcut. And you can show which steps even work, right? Visibility Mac OS, visible in list, visible in action bar. So I can say whether this one is actually available in Mac OS or not. So really I need to turn it off in Mac OS because I don't want it in Mac OS, right? Unfortunately, or you can't, yeah, I can't even do that on the shortcut step. So I could say like, I don't want this. This shortcut is really not that useful though, because you use shortcuts a couple times in it to make it work. So I don't need it at all, but I can even turn off certain steps that don't exist uh, or don't, wouldn't work on a specific platform, which is excellent. I've just turned that off on Mac OS, so I can leave it as it is. iOS 14 widgets. Let's go back to my home screen. You see I've got it here. This is the same widget I have set up on my phone. And what this does is it shows me what's in my inbox. See I've got some stuff here. Inbox. And I've got just a general add note. I can search. New idea. So new idea lets me actually add a note, tags this idea, and archives it. I can jump into my writing, working ideas or I can jump into my ideas folder, right? Um, now, one thing, one other thing that I've done in here that I didn't really show you is that under the workspaces, I right, go manage workspaces. I set every workspace, and I'll start with writing working, right? You set it, um, say working, not idea, not published. And then I set it so that when you open a workspace, it opens to all. That was one of the key things as well. So that when I came in, I didn't just like, hey, where is it under the inbox or is it under archive? Like I just goes to all. I don't need to worry about where it is. It's just right under the all area of drafts. That was another key thing that really helped me get drafts, make it work for me in my head, which was excellent. And I've really been liking it since then. Still a problem. So one thing, and this is maybe a uh, an iPad OS thing or Mac OS autocomplete thing, is that back tick. You can see I put a back tick in, and right down here it says it wants to do one terabyte. So I don't like that. Like, so I'll do PHP. So that'll work fine. I do three back tick and write some code goes here. But when I'm just doing, say, um, function C, we autocorrect. Now I can actually turn these off, the autocorrect settings in iPadOS over gen in general. And I may actually do that when I have a hardware keyboard plugged in, just not have autocorrect going because it's kind of not working. But those really are the things that make drafts work for me. It has been again, my main writing tool again for, oh, how long? I don't know, probably a month and a half again. And I've been really liking it. I've been liking that everything is kind of in one spot. So my, my publish action kind of works in other places, but I had to do a bunch of it manual at the same time. So I had to like run one shortcut and then run a second shortcut. And in this case, it just does it all for me and I don't have to worry about it, right? And I had to come into drafts anyways for footnotes to just do them easily, or I had to um, like have a separate application open to do my footnotes in. So as I went through, I had to like write the footnotes on the side, the bottom part of them, and then come back and make sure I didn't like misnumber anything and that was just a pain in the butt. Ultimately drafts is the blogging tool I'm using and I think that it is worthwhile for you to look at as well. If you like the video you can give me a thumbs up below if you loved it you can subscribe then hit the bell and YouTube might maybe let you know what's happening but you know it's YouTube so who knows. And if you want to support the channel you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and help keep the videos coming or you can go to curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare where you can take my course on Tick Tick and watch my upcoming course on time blocking. Have an excellent day.